Hey, Truther fam, it's Sonia here. I did it again. I went thrifting again. So I was driving back from dropping my son off and I saw the store I'd never been in. I was like, oh, you just, you know, just go in there for like a minute and just check it out. And look what I found. Vintage fondue forks. As soon as I saw that shape, I was like, oh my God, atomic age, mid-century. And they're, they're so cute. Look at them. They're so gorgeous. Oh my God. I'm seriously turning into my mother. It's just like this thing that's happening to me that I just, I feel like I don't even have any control over it. I'm just literally turning into my mother. She was the same way. So I got these atomic fondue forks for a dollar. How could I say no? It was a steal. And then I also saw this. As soon as I saw it, I was like, wait a minute. Oh my god, what's that? It's the deviled egg tray. That's got to be mid-century. Plus, I could tell, like, the kind of wood... I don't think it's teak. I think it's acacia. And I was just like, oh my god, how much? Three dollars. So I bought it. I see some of these selling online for a lot, but this one has scratches, so I don't know. I paid three bucks. I could probably get 20, which I still think is good. Make me happy. You know, there's a certain amount of joy in finding something and also in buying it. And it's like, if you sell it, then you, you can justify your nonstop shopping. So that was good. So now, since I'm on a bit of a shopping high, it's like the shopping crack, you guys. Like, I went, I got this, and I was like, that's awesome. And then I was like, you know, I think I could just make a little detour down to Verdun and just look. This is Verdun. One of the few remaining neighborhoods on the south part of the island that are not gentrified yet. Starting to a little bit, but still basically the, the way it always was. This was a poor neighborhood historically. Uh, I think mostly Irish. And um, a lot of it hasn't been renovated since like the 80s. Oh, Verdun, otherwise known as Verdump, but it is getting more gentrified now. Uh, it's getting fixed up. Did live in Verdump once. <laughs> no offense to people who live in Verdun, just saying. <laughs> I lived in Verdump in the early, no, late 90s. You know what? This is actually the street that I lived on when I lived in Verdun. And this was a street, it's called Galt. The metro's right there. Um, I lived somewhere, somewhere down there in one of these buildings. I don't remember which one now. No kidding. This is Wellington Street. This is the part that's getting a little bit trendy now. Sometimes they fix it all up nicely with lights, make little street festivals. Oh, look. You can even get your COVID shot. How convenient. There's the Metro. Yeah, back in the day, this would have been full of papers. It's a bit better now, though. So I'm heading down here to go to the Renaissance. Check it out. Here it is. This is the thrift store. This is Renaissance. Still reasonably low cost here. Uh, there's a Sally Ann down there, which... From what I could see last time I went by the window, it was outrageously expensive. But I'm just going to ch go check it out just to see. And just so I can show you. <laughs> okay, I'm out of there. I was in there for a long time. I only bought one thing. It's this. Very cute. A little square leather bag. The brand is Boss Balm. Discontinued from Europe somewhere, like Netherlands or something. Isn't that the cutest little thing? It's like a little mini tiny little mini suitcase with the long crossbody strap so I can actually use it but I just I don't know man I just really liked it and it was only five bucks so I mean I I'm gonna put it up but of course if, I, if it doesn't if it doesn't sell like I'll use it I only buy things that I really love I'm trying not to feel guilty about walking around hanging out in the thrift stores and I'm looking at it like you know we all need some downtime Something that just clears your head, and I feel like going to these thrift stores, it clears my head. It functions as downtime. So I'm looking at this as like, this is my me time. 
just doing something for me. Okay, this is the Sally Ann. Uh, the last time I was here, I noticed that the prices were very high. Like, you must be kidding me. Look at this. What? $150 for this set? Okay, it's in really good shape and everything, but at the uh, Renaissance, they would have been selling the whole set for like 40 bucks. So that's the difference here. I was actually shocked last time. I, I just looked in the window and I saw the prices. That here, this looks like Laurentian pottery. They're selling it for $99. You know, um, I mean, I guess that's better than maybe what you would get it for on Etsy. I'm not sure. I think maybe not even 120 bucks for this. I mean, what the actual, you know, like what's up with that? This is Salvation Army. <laughs> Holy crap. This is why I didn't go in last time. It's like, what's up? You know what's up? What's up is that they're, they know that everyone is buying to resell and everything's, everything that was super cheap, like people's junk is now getting marked up, of course, marked up to the moon. And I guess they just figured they'll get in on the action. And why not mark it up themselves and sell it directly? I just feel like that kind of sucks. Like you're the Salvation Army, you're supposed to have cheap stuff. I don't know. It's just, it's a different age, you know. And apparently in some places, uh, thrifting is much, much worse. Like every single store knows uh, what stuff is worth and they just mark it up directly and it's very hard to get good deals in Montreal I find you still can but for how long I mean who knows okay, well I'm gonna go in anyway I guess I'll see you on the other side $250 holy crap whoa that's cool that's got like a 70s vibe to it, speckled stoneware in green. And it's signed. Yeah, GH July 77. That is kind of cool. What is it? It's like a vase or something. That's kind of cool. I like it. I'm going all out now. I mean, I've lost control completely of my spending. I'm, I'm now in Sweet Lee's. This is an adorable uh, cafe here on Wellington in Verdun. Look at the ceiling. I mean, it's got a lot of cachet, and the food is really good. And it's like, you know, what the heck, I mean, my birthday's coming up. After that, it's Mother's Day. I mean, why wait? Why wait for the calendar? Let's just do it now. Like, I'm having a delicious Americano with cream. Thank you. Like, this place has a lot of style. I love the red wall, and I love the plants. Don't you guys love that? Doesn't that look so posh? Like that has a bit of Victorian kind of, so luxe, and um, there's a nice little corner for sitting. There's a uh, um, there's a meth head going out the door. She was hanging out there having coffee. Uh, meth heads need a place to catch a break too, though. Meth heads need a little downtime too. Oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to offend anyone. I, maybe I'm not supposed to say meth head. Um, maybe tweaker. Tweaker would be more socially acceptable. Um, a tweaker, yes. A tweaker had to have coffee too. And she chose to have it in this very posh, relaxing surroundings. Good choice. Whew. That was fun. Man, I keep, I'm seeing myself in the camera and it's like, they call this sad beige and it really, it just makes you look so washed out. I mean, really. And these glasses are so unflattering. Like, what the hell? This is like the frumpiest look I've ever had. Wait, where are my other glasses? Okay, these are the new ones. The thing is, they were really cheap. They were $200 lenses plus frames. But now, every time I wear them, I feel like I just look like so frumpy. Look at this versus... My Prada glasses that cost a fortune. See, it does make a difference. You do get way, way better style with Prada. Now I look all glam, glam and blingy. Put these on, I look frumpy. I mean, really, but anyway, it kind of makes me sad. Like every time I wear them, I'm like, why did I do that? You know why I did it? Because it's really hard for me to find glasses and I always take forever and I end up leaving with nothing. And I just kind of pushed myself. I was just like, Sonia, don't be so picky. They're fine. They've got blue. 
Now I have them and they suck. So they're just my driving glasses. That's what happened. Anyway, it's only money, right? And I do have a pair of glasses that I can use for driving, so that's good. You know, while I'm here, I might as well do a little food review of Sweet Lee, which is the place I just went to. Mm -mm, I got this. Very decadent. It's a... Oh my god, my mouth is watering so much I can't even talk. I'm like... <laughs> It looks so good. It's um, it's a croissant with broccoli, egg, and cheese. Mmm. Yeah, I know. It's a greasy croissant. But it has broccoli, so that makes up for it. It's healthy. It's got vegetables. Very tasty. Everything at Sweet Lee's is good. Yeah, delicious. And I also got a little coffee. I had to get an Americano because they didn't have filter. Very good. Definitely worth it. Absolutely worth it. $8 with tip for the two. That's how it is these days. But if you come down to Verdun and you want to check out Sweet Lee's, do it. It's worth it. So let me show you what I got. Boss Boom bag. Apparently, maybe it's not 70s, it could be 80s, but it's very cool. This is really something. It's so solid. It's just like a little mini suitcase with a big strap. So that was five bucks. I'm very happy with that purchase. And then the ugliest vase in the world. It just screams 1970s. And then, sure enough, underneath it says 1977. I mean, I have sort of mixed feelings about this one, but it was only five bucks and I'll put it up for 15. We'll see what happens. And this was the third thing that I got here. These earrings, which I can actually wear because they're clip-on. These are 1950s clip-on earrings from Japan. They were only three bucks. They're pretty cool. I probably won't wear them. I can't I can't have things hanging on my ears. It just feels weird. But, um, yeah, they're, they're pretty nice. Look. I'm not focusing very well, but... Yeah, they're pretty cool. I really like them. So that was a coup de coeur. And then, of course, I have my vintage fondue forks. These are super cool. I love them. No regrets there. And my deviled egg plate. Acacia wood. Slightly scratched still good only three bucks I like this one too so you might be thinking wow Sonia you just keep spending so much money but remember I made $165 the previous week or so and I reinvested that and now I sold something else for 15 and I have reinvested the $15 into all that stuff that total was $17 so so far, like, actually, I'm just breaking even, and I have lots more interesting merchandise. And now, let's say I bought this for 5 and I sell it for 15 I bought these for a dollar. I could certainly sell them for $15. Um, again, here also, bought it for 5 I could sell it for 15 for sure. I could probably sell this one for more than that. This one, I think it's either going to be like it sells or it doesn't. Either I could sell it for a high markup and it'll, people will want it or it's just going to sit there even for $10 and nobody will take it. We'll see. I don't usually do fashion stuff. And the tray as well and the earrings 15. So I've got um, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. If I sell all these items for $15 each, I'll come out with $75 which is a $60 profit. So we'll see what happens. So now I get to show Aaron what I bought and I just showed him this. Yeah, 70s Balagui, <laughs> the epitome of tacky. It's it is. a tacky time. So ugly. <laughs> Why did you buy it? <laughs> because it's 70s. It's you know. got this thing, you can just no, throw it no. away. <laughs> <laughs> If, if, it, if it didn't have this and it was just sort of a planter, it would look a lot better. And this is what made me hesitate. But at the end, I was like, screw it. It's only five bucks. So I, I was thinking uh, maybe you could put, we could put brushes in it or whatever. 
Yeah, brush it. Oh, you're going to keep it? No, I'm going to list it. It's an experiment. You guys, I don't believe this. I just bought this hideous thing yesterday. I put it up for $15, which is three times what I paid. And it's already selling today's so one day later. I, I put it up like literally 12 hours ago and it's already selling. Surprise. So that's it. Now I'm going to get back to my real life. Huh? No more escapism for me. I'm going to go to Costco and take care of my family. And uh, I'll let you know down the road what sells and what doesn't. And anyway, I had a lot of fun and I hope that you guys had fun coming along with me as well. I hope you're doing well. Let me know what you're up to in the comments. Let me know if you do any thrifting or reselling as well. Let me know how it's going. And if you're not on my Patreon and you want to join, you can join for as little as a dollar. Uh, what happens when you're on there is, first of all, you can message me directly. But also, whenever I post uh, or I go live, I always notify there. So Because YouTube often doesn't, you will definitely get notified by me. Also, if YouTube decides to unsubscribe you, you'll still be in touch with me there. I mean, it's it's really just like a backup way for us to stay in touch because YouTube is just, it doesn't do the job so well anymore. Plus, I have assorted rewards. Like, I can promote your stuff, hook you up with things. So, yeah, there's there's rewards. And, um, and it's just a way also to build more community. So, it's uh, patreon.com slash the truth or girls. And that's it. Thanks for joining me in the chat. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.